Hi, this is Karthik Shanoi. Today we are going to understand the contents of a technical paper Security Threats and Challenges in Cloud Computing by A. Al Shamari et al. First of all, we will try to understand the basics of cloud computing. Cloud computing provides services to share resources like networks, servers, and services with many people using virtualization of resources. Let's check out its advantages. Cloud computing can reduce the cost of maintenance and management of hardware and software resources. These services can be used from anywhere. It does not require you to install any applications on your system for accessing your files or running your software. Now let's check out the disadvantages. It uses proprietary interfaces, data formats and technologies which make migrating to a different platform difficult. It is susceptible to a lot of security threats that we will be discussing later on. Let's now check out the deployment models. Public cloud can be accessed by any individual or organization. Private cloud service is offered to a specific organization and only members of that organization can access it. This makes it less susceptible to security attacks than public cloud. Hybrid cloud is a combination of two or more cloud models. Finally, let's discuss the service models of cloud computing. Infrastructure as a service enables the users to host the OS of their choice on virtualized resources. Platform as a service provides a platform on which clients can host their developed applications. Software as a service provides browser-initiated software for use by many users over the internet. Now we will understand the main content of the paper, the threats in cloud computing and their solutions. The first security threat discussed is XML signature wrapping attack. For communication with cloud servers, simple object access protocol is used. Messages exchanged are in an XML format like this. The body is processed by the server. Now to protect the data from modifications, ID referencing is used. Also, to ensure integrity, an XML signature is added in the header tag. The XML signature typically has this structure. The reference tag will store the reference of the element whose signed digest is computed. Both the timestamp and the body are signed in case it is sent over an insecure transport channel, while only the timestamp is signed and sent over a secure channel. For securing the channel, SSL or TLS may be used. There are four types of XML signature wrapping attacks. Simple ancestry context, optional element context, sibling value context, and sibling order context attack. This paper discusses the simple ancestry context attack. This attack cannot be performed if the request is directly sent to a cloud server. But if there is a middle tier such as firewall or proxy server through which the request must be sent, the attacker can gain access to this middle tier and access this message. This is possible since SSL or TLS involves point-to-point -point communication and will be decrypted at the middle tier. This vulnerability was demonstrated on the AWS servers. Let's see how the message is modified to conduct this attack. Initially, the message will be framed like this. Here, the signature is for the element with ID as CMP, which is the ID of the body tag. This body tag has a symbol IBM. After this message is received by the server, it will first verify that the timestamp and the CMP element have not been modified by verifying the signature. Now, the attack could transform the message into something like this. Here, the original body element is added into a wrapper inside the header. The original body tag has been replaced. When this message is received by the server, it will see that the signature of the CMPE element needs to be verified. It searches for this element, finds it, and validates the signature. Server finds out that the integrity of this body tag has not been altered. During further processing, this tag gets ignored since it is there in wrapper and the new body tag is used as data, which has the symbol MBI. This is possible since for such signature verification, the path of the element is not specified. Instead, just the ID is mentioned. 
The solution to this attack, as proposed in the paper, is using REST over SOAP. REST is Representational State Transfer. This is a solution because it provides encryption by default to many data formats. The next threat that we are going to discuss is browser security. SSL or TLS uses a four-way handshake between the server and client. After negotiating the cipher suites, compression methods, the data to be sent can be protected from man-in-the-middle attacks that can occur on the communication path between the client and the server by encryption. Browsers use SSL or TLS for sending SOAP requests since they can't make XML signature or XML encryption. Browsers use a four-way handshake to authenticate the users and apply SSL or TLS to encrypt the credential data. But the authentication data is still insecure. This is because SSL or TLS supports point-to-point -point communication. Suppose there is a middle tier between the browser and the cloud. The attacker, after gaining access to this middle tier, can sniff these messages and gain access to the user credentials. The solution to this is making the browser support WS security, which is web services security. Using this, the web browsers will be able to use XML encryption for providing end-to-end -end encryption in SOAP messages. Thus, the message need not be decrypted at the middle tier and the attacker will be unable to make sense out of these encrypted messages received at the middle tier. The third and the final threat that the paper discusses is vendor lock-in. Different cloud vendors use different underlying technologies and proprietary standards that are usually incompatible with those of other cloud vendors. Thus, if an organization is using proprietary services of a vendor, it becomes difficult for it to port the application to a different platform provided by a different organization since they will have their own standards. Even the interfaces might be proprietary. Because of this, the organization cannot easily move to a different vendor without substantial costs, legal constraints, or technical incompatibilities. There are three solutions to this problem. Let's check them out. The first one is software adaptation, which is a process of defining and arranging existing third-party application elements and services with the view of removing mismatch when used in new systems. Model-driven architecture provides developers with the authority to choose which cloud framework to choose from and derive cloud-specific settings. The source codes resulting from the tool will create a pre-configured cloud characteristic with the metadata in it. Refactoring is the process of modifying the software components in such a way that the external workings are not affected. These were the security threats and the solutions as proposed to them in the paper. Thank you for watching this video. Have a nice time ahead.